Welcome back, I'm glad to see you here again. In today's video, we're going to make a custom template for our blog post using Elementor Pro. So I assume that you have Elementor Pro while continuing with this tutorial. So in this video, we're going to be making this custom template. So this custom template of our blog articles has the featured image as the background and it has two columns here. The column on the left is the actual article and the column on the right is other related articles to this article that we are displaying. So let us start making this custom template. So here in the back end of your WordPress website, we are going to go to templates. Now we can either go to save templates or theme builder. Either way is correct. I'm going to go into theme builder for this example. Once theme builder is loaded, we're going to go on the left hand side to single post. We'll click that. On the right hand side of the screen, you can see on the top there, it says add new. We are going to make a new template for our single posts, which is going to be our blog posts, obviously. So here you can really see all the different example layouts that there are for single blog posts. Now you can choose any of these, but for this example, we're going to make our own. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to close this window and we are going to start from scratch. And as you can see, this whole website that I have over here is just very bare bones. And that's on purpose, because in the future videos, I'm going to expand on this example website. So the first thing we're going to do is create an outer section for this example. So we click on the add button. We say the one column section. We are going to say full width. The column gap is going to be zero. The height, the default height is going to be fit screen. And I want this to be stretched. The tag will be article. And this is going to be the settings that I'm going to be using for the outer section of this blog template. But once we have the outer section of our template, we are going to head into style and we are going to skip the background and we're going to go to background overlay. Now, we're doing this on purpose because there's custom CSS that we're going to be inserting over here that the background overlay works better with. So the background type, if this is not expanded it's going to be classic on the image we're going to hover on image and at the bottom corner it says dynamic tags as you can see where i'm actually hovering over with my mouse we're going to click on that and we're going to choose the featured image so what happens here is whichever blog post loads up the featured image of that blog post will automatically be the background of our template it's a very unique thing that we're doing over here so we don't have to do this but this is the way that we're going to be styling it in this example so the position we're going to have is center center. The attachment's going to be fixed. So it's fixed as we scroll and it gives that cool effect like that. The repeat is going to be none and the size is going to be cover. Now the opacity I want on full. So it looks like a proper background image, but the CSS filters is where the magic's gonna happen now. So we're gonna click on this pencil icon. We're going to make the blur at about a nine and that should look pretty good for our background image that we're going to be using for our template. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to click on this nine dot icon. We're going to look for intersection and we're going to drag this into the center here. I want the settings of this section to be full width. The gaps can stay as default. The height, everything else can stay as default as well. Don't really have to do anything over here as a section but we are going to stylize the columns. So we're gonna click on the icon of the left column. So if you don't know where that is, let me grab your attention with my mouse as it's going in a circle. I'm gonna go onto the left column, and as you can see where it's going to this icon over here that says edit column. And we're gonna click on that. And now we have the settings of the column. So what I wanna do is skip over to advanced. I'm going to add a margin here. I'm going to add a 10 margin across everything. The background is the next thing that I'm going to be editing here. So I'm going to go into style, the background color, I'm going to set to white. And then at the bottom, it says border. I'm going to click on this. I'm going to add a 10 border radius and I am going to add a shadow underneath. I'm going to put it as a 75, 75% 75 shadow black all over that should be fine 
So now if I add something to here, let me just add a normal heading. You can instantly see the design that I'm actually going for. The border radius of 10 and just a slight shadow around there just to pop off the background image even more. So let me take out this heading. I'm going to right click and say delete. The first thing we're going to add is the post title. I'm going to drag that along. We're going to put the post title into the column. The alignment of this post title, I would like to be in the center. The HTML tag should stay as H1. The style is where we're going to go next. I'm going to click on that. The text color, we can change to whatever we'd like. I'm going to have a deep charcoal color to mine. I am going to change the typography to a transform of uppercase. And I like, and I think the weight to a 400 is pretty good. Now the next thing I'm going to add is the actual article. So I'm going to click on that nine dot icon. I am going to go down to post content. I'm going to drag it underneath the post title and let go. Now this, the text color I would like a little bit darker, also like a deep charcoal, but not as dark as the title. So the next thing I'm going to do is add space so that the title and the content isn't as close to the edge of the top and bottom that it is right now. So I'm going to click on a nine dot icon. I'm going to scroll down till I see space. I'm going to click and drag and put that on top of the title. Right click, duplicate, put it in between the title and the article. Right click on this one, duplicate, and I'm going to put it underneath the actual article itself. I'm going to click on the top space now. I'm going to reduce the space here to about a 15. Let me go down to 15. The space in between, also I'm going to drag down to say like a 15. And the space on the bottom I'm going to leave as is for now. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take our mouse and we're going to put it in between the two columns that exist in the section. So now we've designed the left side column pretty much to where we'd like it. The next step is to actually make it wider because we don't want the right column to be as wide as it is right now. So we're going to take the mouse and we're going to put it into the center in between the two columns. There's that little dotted line. If we click and hold that, we can drag it to the right until it's about a 75% or 80% width. For now, I'm just going to put it as a 75 and then let go. So now this column is 75% width and then the other one is the remaining 25. So let's stylize the right hand column now. So again, we're going to take our mouse, we're going to hover onto the column and click on the edit column icon. Over here, we're going to do the same thing. In style, we're going to click on the classic paint icon and the color we're going to set to white. The border, same as the one on the left, is going to be a 10 radius all around. The shadow is going to be a 75. And we'll leave all the rest of the settings as is. Then in advanced, the margin, we have 10 all around. Now, why do we want a margin of 10? So the style of the two columns don't actually bump into each other. So that 10 margin gives us space in between the columns nicely. So even in mobile view, when the two columns collapse underneath each other, there's still going to be that space in between them and the sides of the screen. And this is the effect that we are looking for. So on the right hand side, what we're going to use this for is for other posts that are in our blog. So we're going to scroll down on the left hand side menu, down to pro, and the very first icon is posts. We're going to click and drag and put that in the right hand column. Now, the skin layout that we want is going to be cards. We want one column and we want, say, four posts per page. All the other settings are going to keep pretty much the same. For the query of this posts layout, we are going to keep this related to the post that they have selected. So we're going to click on query and the source instead of posts is going to be related. Once we're happy with this, let's go back to left hand column. Over here, we are also going to add our featured image in between the post header and the post article. I'm only adding this now because I'm showing that we don't have to do a step-by-step -step process. We can do things in any order that we wish. Let's go ahead and do that now. We're going to click and drag our featured image. We're going to drag it above the article and let go. Now, right now, it's also above the space that we put in. 
Let's double click on that space. We're going to duplicate it and we're going to drag it by the pencil icon above the featured image, but below the article title. And this is our blog template. It was very easy to do. Now we're going to go ahead and click publish. When you click publish, the condition screen pops up. We're going to add a condition. We're going to say include this for all posts. Right? So you say include posts all. So we can make this more custom. So we can say on particular categories of posts, a custom template would be catered just for that one. Once we're happy with our conditions, we just say save and close. And now we can see it live. And there you go. So there's our template being displayed in the front end of our website. If we click on another post, you can see the template being reused. And then obviously the background in the back also changes to the featured image of the article and it's all nicely laid out and working. Now sometimes on a rare occasion, there is a chance that your custom template seems like it just doesn't fit on the top and the bottom of your, your website. Now that is an easy fix. So in our template, if we go to the main outer section and we click on that section settings, we go into layout and on the height section, instead of saying fit to screen, just click it to default and then update. That will fix the top and bottom issue that sometimes occurs with some websites. Now, why that happens, I'm not sure, it just does. Hope you enjoyed making your own custom template. It was a very simple and quick process, and I'll see you in the next one.